My name is Dr. Anthony Lamera, I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. Today we're going to talk about cardiac tumors of the heart. Now there are different types of cardiac tumors. There are primary tumors, which are tumors that come specifically from the heart, and there are metastatic tumors, or tumors that go to the heart from some other organ. The most common primary cardiac tumor is referred to as a myxoma. Now before we get started though, let's just go over the anatomy of the heart. This is a model of the heart here. I like to think of the heart in terms of sides. This is the right side, right atrium, right ventricle. Blood will go from the right atrium through a valve, referred to as a tricuspid valve, into the ventricle. Now the valve works like a one-way door. It basically, when the valve opens, the blood goes through, and when the valve closes, the blood will stay in each area. Now, this is the left side of the heart, left atrium, left ventricle. And similarly, between the left atrium and left ventricle is a valve, referred to as the mitral valve. When the valve opens, the blood will go through, and when the valve closes, the blood will stay in each area. From the left ventricle, blood will then go into this structure. This is referred to as the aorta. It's the largest artery in the body. It carries blood through these blood vessels to the brain. It goes behind the heart and supplies the other organs, the liver, kidney, and even the lower extremities. Now, myxomas are actually more common in women than men. Myxomas classically uh, occur in a, in a ratio somewhere between two to one uh, in between men, excuse me, females to males. And most women are usually between the ages of 40 and 60 years old. So it's not really seen commonly in the pediatric population. 75% of myxomas, by the way, will come from the left atrium. And specifically, the left atrium by the mitral annulus, which is where the mitral valve comes from or the interatrial symptoms, specifically the fossa ovalis, which is a depression or depressed structure in the interatrial septum. And by the way, that septum is between the, separates the left atrium and right atrium. So again, 75% of, the, of these myxomas come from the left atrium, 20% come from the right atrium, and another 5% comes from a combination of the atrium and ventricles. Now, when patients have myxomas, they're classically have different types of symptoms. The first is referred to as an obstructive symptom, and that's going to vary based on whether the mass is in the left atrium or right. Now, if you have a mass in the left atrium, it will sometimes impair the blood flow through the valve, the mitral valve, into the left ventricle, and you'll see some of these obstructive symptoms which referred to as, or which are described commonly as shortness of breath or dyspnea on exertion, which is basically means shortness of breath with activity. These patients who have this obstructive symptoms often will have enlarged left atriums. Because it's difficult to get blood through the valve, their atriums get bigger. That leads to or contributes to pulmonary hypertension, which is basically elevated pressures in the lungs. Now, in contrast, if the mass is in the right atrium, it becomes difficult sometimes for the blood to get to, through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. As a result, everything gets built up. You see, it, you see that the right atrium gets larger. And as a consequence, these patients often have lower extremity edema, so their legs get big, or they can have enlarged livers, and that sometimes become abnormal. So again, the first type of symptoms from these masses would be an obstructive symptom. Another type of symptom is referred to as a thromboembolic type symptom. And that's when a part of the mass embolizes or gets dislodged and goes throughout the body. So for example, if we're just talking about a left atrium mass, if a part of that mass gets dislodged, it goes through the trica excuse me, through the mitral valve into the left ventricle, then it can go into the aorta. And again, if, it, if, it, if it's in the aorta, it can go to the brain or behind the heart and go everywhere else, the lower extremities, the kidneys, what have you. In contrast, if the mass is in the right atrium and gets dislodged, it can go into the right ventricle. And from the blood from the right ventricle is ventricle goes into the pulmonary artery, which supplies blood to the lungs. So you can have a mass starting in the right atrium, going into the right ventricle, and then going into the pulmonary arteries to the lungs. So those are the types of emboli you can see, left side, right side. Sometimes it's considered worse, it's most likely considered worse to go to have an embolization on the left side, because if it's the left side, unfortunately, it can go into the brain and lead to a stroke. Another type of symptom is referred to as constitutional symptoms, classically fevers, chills, night sweats, or even weight loss, or just overall not feeling well. Now, when someone has a myxoma, 
it's diagnosed in several ways. The most common way is with an echocardiogram. An echocardiogram, which is basically just an ultrasound, gives you great images of the heart, and it can tell you if the mass looks like a myxoma and if it's in the left atrium or right atrium. Another classic test for diagnosing the myxomas would be a CT scan or a cardiac MRI or an MRI that looking specifically at the heart. Now, when a patient has a myxoma, when you're sure of it or, or think they have a myxoma, the, the, the primary treatment is resecting it, going to the operating and removing it. So let's, just, let's describe that. So if someone has a myxoma, they, get to the, they go to the operating room, they'll eventually go to sleep, they have a breathing tube placed, and then they'll be prepared for surgery, which basically means their chest will be prepared, prepped, and then draped so everything's sterile. Now, there's many ways to get into the chest. There's a traditional route, which is a median sternotomy, opening up the sternum. There is a minimally invasive approach, which is going in between the right, the right side, the ribs on the right side, or the left side. For, for the convenience sake, or simplicity rather, let's just talk about the median sternotomy. So, I go, you open up the sternum, and then you get to the heart. If the mass is in the left atrium, for example, you will go on the heart-lung machine, which allows us to safely do the operation. Then we'll open up the left atrium, and then we'll resect the mass. It's very careful, that, very important rather, that we resect the mass in its entirety, that we don't leave any residual tumor behind, otherwise it'll come back. Now sometimes the defect that you leave behind when you resect the mass is so large that you can't just simply close it, close it and you have to put a patch in there to make sure the defect is secure. Once the mass is removed, you close the atrium, then you work on coming off the heart-lung machine. Once you're on the heart -lung, off the heart-lung machine, you'll get to the intensive care unit. This operation can vary in, in length, somewhere between two and three hours, however. Afterwards, the patient will be in the hospital somewhere between three and four days. Now, although tumors are primary tumors of the heart are rare, surgeons feel are, do the operation fairly often or, or feel very comfortable doing it, and so the risks are relatively low, and that would include infection, bleeding, and the risk of death would actually be very low as well. Okay, that's a brief description of a cardiac tumor. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Thank you very much.